Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Counterfeit God. Beloved family, our text says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Bank tellers are taught that in order to recognize a counterfeit bill, you have to first study the original. In medicine, you study what is normal before you can identify the abnormal. The trainees spend hours upon hours studying the original. The more you know about the original, the less likely you will be able to be fooled by a counterfeit. The more you know the Most High God, the less likely you will be able to be fooled by any counterfeit gods or false idols. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us, Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is no different for you and I, the children of God, citizens of the kingdom of God or man. We have to study in school, in college, in sports, in business, and in life. If we are not studying our game and the opponent's game, then we will not be prepared to win. I used to love film day when I played basketball in college because we could identify the opponent's strengths and weaknesses, their tendencies, and their go-to plays. Do you know that the Satan studies you? He watches and studies to see what are your weaknesses and your tendencies so he can target your temptation. Then he keeps attacking our weaknesses, tempting until he defeats us. He tempts us with small things first to see if he can compromise our faith. Sin crouches at our door. It lays low. It doesn't want to be detected until it's too late. A snake can crouch and patiently wait for hours. A diamondback rattlesnake can go for two years without feeding. But in contrast to the incredible ability to wait is even more incredible the ability to strike. The weapon of the snake is not size or strength, but unexpected striking speed. A diamondback can strike up to four times in the amount of time it takes for a human to blink. That is inconceivably fast. When the snake encounters its prey, the unalert and unwatchful prey doesn't stand a chance. Sin waits, and the wait causes us to become complacent and let our God down while sin is crouching at our doorstep. The Satan is that great serpent and has the ability to wait for years so we can forget about him. But there he is crouching, lying and waiting, motionless, camouflage in the environment in our homes, in our workplace, families and relationships, and yes, in church as religion. Then while we are not sober or alert, sin strikes so fast we don't stand a chance. That is if we are not in righteousness or right standing with God. The prophet Ezekiel points an accurate picture of who the Satan is. He chronicles what he is like as Lucifer, the beautiful cherub, to who he has become. Ezekiel 28 describes Lucifer as the personhood of the king of Tyre, the anti-god city. This nameless king of Tyre is portrayed as having a different nature from man. He is a cherub, verse 14 declares. He was in a different realm from man, the holy mount of God. He received a different judgment from man. He was cast out of the mountain of God and thrown to earth. And how he is described don't seem to fit that of a normal human being. He's full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, and having the seal of perfection. So we can picture that the king of Tyre was none other than the cherub Lucifer. So who is Lucifer, and why did he rebel? 
Job 38 says, when the morning stars sang together, all the sons of God shout together. Ezekiel talks about Lucifer as the anointed cherub that was covered in topaz, diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, jasper, gold, and all precious stones. And he was full of pipes and harps to make music. Can you picture this beauty and splendor? In fact, this was the reason why he rebelled. The Bible said that he was created to worship in the presence of Elohim in the holy mountain of God, but iniquity was found in him. I can't help but highlight the comparison of how David played the harp before King Saul and his integrity and honor for God would not allow him to rebel against King Saul. Yet, Lucifer in a similar role played music before King Elohim and rebelled against his king. He became proud because of his beauty and he corrupted his wisdom because of his splendor. So the sin that corrupted Lucifer was self-generated pride. Oh, help me here. I want to pause there for a moment and ask us, what pride is in our life that is causing us to not serve our creator the way he created us to? If pride was the sin that corrupted Lucifer, don't you think it's the same go-to play he wants us to fall for? Well, it was the same deceit the serpent strike against Adam and Eve. He told them, don't you want to be like God? It is exactly what he thought in his mind. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will ascend to the mountain of the Most High. In Luke 10, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It was God who strike back so fast that he fell from the mountain of God, the place he wanted to rule over. So he enters the earth using his corrupted wisdom to cause man to fall not from the mountain of God or heaven, but from the mountain of domain. Don't miss that. The mountain of man is dominion and authority. God gave authority to man to rule the earth and the Satan wanted it for himself. Satan is in the earth realm out for revenge against the sons of God. Don't get complacent family. Watch and pray for his slightest movements as he crouches at our doors. He is roaming about all over the earth, seeking someone to devour and destroy. But you and I, let's keep focusing on our King, on Elohim, our Father God. Let's study the authentic, genuine, one true God so we can identify all the counterfeits and false gods masquerading like angels of light, when in truth, there is no light in them. They are false prophets, false teachers, false idols, and counterfeit gods. Much love.